This material is made available to you by or on behalf of the University of Melbourne under Section 113P of the Copyright Act 1968. It may be subject to copyright. For more information, visit the University Copyright website. Thank you and welcome everyone to the MBS seminar series and to our special guest presenter, Mayor of Wyndham uh, City, uh, the lovely councillor Susan McIntyre. And welcome, of course, to our head of school, Josh Slater, our head of department, veterinary bioscience, Professor Simon Bailey, sorry, Professor Josh Slater, and our host with the most for today um, of the uh, uh, the convener of the MBS seminar series, Dr. Panos Lukopoulos, our uh, anatomic pathologist to the stars. Hi, Simon. That's, that's great. Again, okay. so, woman Jika. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Melbourne Veterinary Seminars. This is Panos Lukopoulos. I will be hosting this seminar, and I would like to warmly welcome our speaker, Councillor Susan McIntyre, the mayor of the city of Wyndham who is joining us from Werribee, literally three blocks down the road. The city of Wyndham is the fastest growing local government area in Australia, and it takes in both the University of Melbourne Veterans School's Werribee campus and Zoo's Victoria Werribee Open Range Zoo. Councillor McIntyre will discuss aspects of the city of Wyndham regarding its location and population, the council's priorities and how it is planning to address future challenges within its local government area. Susan, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Your presentation is one of the highlights of the series today, so thank you. This is an active, vibrant forum of primarily veterinary or related content and we were keen to expand it towards fostering meaningful interactions with the community and government. Before we start, I would like to state that the University of Melbourne acknowledges the traditional owners of the land on which we work, learn and live. In our case, the Wiradjuri Woiwurrung and Wurrung peoples. We recognize the unique place held by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island peoples as the original custodians of the lands and waterways across the Australian continent. We acknowledge the enduring cultural practices of caring for country and pay our respect to elders, past, present, and future. There will be some time at the end for questions and discussion. Thanks so much again to Aaron, Lena, Alison, and Rosa for organizing this. And without further ado, I'll to you soon. Thank you very much. So I'll just check first of all that you can see my shared screen. Just one moment. Yes, that's all in view. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Panos and uh, Aaron. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. My name, as, um, as we said, is Councillor Susan McIntyre, and I'm the mayor here at Wyndham City. And I wanted to thank you, um, first of all, for the opportunity to explain a little about me, Wyndham City, and the challenges and the opportunities we face. Melbourne um, Veterinary School is such an important part of our community here in Wyndham. So it's a pleasure to be invited to speak as part of your seminar series. As was said already by Pallas, we are one of the largest and the fastest growing councils in Australia, and it's an exciting and diverse place to be. Um, the weather today is sunny, and as everybody knows who lives in Wyndham, it's always sunny and lovely weather here. So um, firstly, um, I too would like to acknowledge and recognize Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people as the first custodians on the land on which Australia was founded. We acknowledge the Bunurong and the Wetherong people as the traditional custodians on the land in which Wyndham is being built. And we pay our respects to our ancestors and elders and all Aboriginal people who may be here online with us today, who always have and always will care for country and community today and for future generations. And in the spirit of reconciliation, we understand the need to build those strong connections between local first people and local government so we can move together forward into the future. So a little bit, I don't think you've got my next screen. Let me just check. Thank you. 
there we go. Well, now we've got that over at the beginning. Now we'll be off plane sailing from now on. So a little bit about me. So I, as you probably can hear from my voice, I um, come to, came to Australia and Wyndham just over 11 years ago with my family. I come from the UK. I was born in Manchester and I was the first person from my school to be accepted into Cambridge University. So I studied law at Cambridge, got a BA and MA and then did my law society finals in Chester. Um, I then did my two years articles in the city of London and qualified as a solicitor. I then went into retail management and worked across all sorts of different formats in England and Scotland, primarily focusing on the human resources. And when I came to Australia, I really focused on being a sole trader. Um, like many people, I believe, who live here in Wyndham, um, we didn't actually have any family here, or my family um, still remain in the UK. Um, and as a lot of people have, it sort of reflects some of the journey of many of our residents that make, and they have those main connections initially overseas. So I first made those strong connections with the local community. Um, and that was the desire to make that sort of change and difference is why I stood um, as a councillor. So I stood for the first time in 2020 um, as a councillor and was elected for four years. So um, this is now the third year of that first term. Um, and I was um, privileged enough to be voted by my peers as mayor at the end of last year in November um, and supported to do that. So I thought it might be um, handy to start with to just know a little bit of a context of um, about our councillors and what um, that looks like how the councillor group is, um, um, is um, presented. So Wyndham's council is um, actually made up of three different wards. So it's split um, geographically into Irurumu Ward, Harrison Ward and Chafee Ward. So that is um, a different number of councillors for each ward. Now, Irumu Ward is actually the smallest um, ward in relation to head of capita, so in relation to number of people, but not geographically. Um, that is why there is more councillors in Harrison Ward and Chafee Ward. And we have a mayor and we have a deputy mayor. So our deputy mayor is Councillor Jenny Barrera and she is um, from Chafee Ward. These have a potential therefore in relation to um, elections. So we are elected, um, we are elected for four years. So um, the election, as I said, was in 2020. Um, these elections are compulsory in relation to voting. And to give you an idea of how competitive they were, in uh, Harrison Ward, uh, the ward that I'm in, we had 38 people that actually stood for four positions. So the next election is in October 2024, and there will be some changes to the new electoral system. So the new electoral system in October 2024 will actually be single member wards. So our whole um, municipality will be broken down, and we believe we may even have 13 councillors rather than 11 councillors as we currently do. So that is sort of a breakdown that gives you a little bit of an idea on concept of um, where we are and how sort of councillors sit. So to look at where we are, so for most people and for everybody I would have thought on this um, on the seminar, it would be probably quite clear where we are, but we've got a little um, map there to um, give people a sort of a, a concept of where we are within the country. So. Um, we are obviously strategically located between Melbourne and Geelong, an area of great economic um, significance, which um, extends beyond obviously our own area and supports the prosperity um, of all Victorians. Um, as you can see from some of the data there, we've sort of pulled together as anywhere, there is so many statistics, but what we thought it was important was to just pull together some sort of um, key statistics to help you give us sort of a concept either uh, in relation to our growth and currently where we are. So on average, we have 115 to 130 babies born a, um, a week to win the mothers and a massive number. And when you think of that in relation to what we would need, that's the equivalent of every four weeks we would need a new school to be built in Wyndham. At the moment, we have about 315,000 residents here in Wyndham, but by 2040, there'll be over 500,000. And as you can see, to give you an idea, that would make Wyndham as big as the current ACT. 
as we know, we have our neighbours, which are another area which is greatly growing, and together we will have over 800,000 residents by 2040. So growth and the um, importance of growth and the impact on growth for us is very important. So if we look really to say who are we, um, what, what, what's the sort of compilation of um, Wyndham? So Wyndham is really um, very young for the most part. So 58% of our residents are age 35 and under. And as you can see, more than half of our Wyndham household uh, families with children. 48% of our population were born overseas. And as I, it was the discussion in the earlier part of the um, introduction, I'm not sure um, how much everybody would have heard of that, but um, we are a very um, diverse community, both in relation to multicultural, multi-faith and multilingual. So in relation to our recent census, which we had on the ABC data, you would see that Wyndham has the three top most multicultural suburbs in the whole of Australia. So Point Cook is the number one suburb that is most multicultural, which is then followed by Werribee and Tarnit. So it's a growing municipality and it's clearly a very um, multicultural one um, and it really sort of adds to that sort of key diversity and also key strength within our community. As you can imagine, with a population um, as such great as this, we really need that key economic um, drivers and those key economic um, skills. So in relation to Wyndham, we have over those 20,000 registered businesses, but we have more people that want to work here than we have local jobs available. This effectively means that two out of the three people who work in Wyndham have to leave the city of Wyndham to go to work. As you can imagine, that has a massive impact both on our infrastructure in relation to um, roads, public transport, which are coming up. So it's very important for us that we have those local jobs in the local areas for our residents to be able to stay. And also if you link it to things like the 20 minute neighborhood, it really gives people that time and energy that they can actually spend in their local community. So things like volunteering, things like um, being part of the um, community in relation to fitness, health, all those sort of key drivers. At the moment, because people travel, they can spend on average two hours a day in the car. And therefore that has a knock on impact, as I say, both in relation to family life and in relation to also people's things like mental and physical health. If we're looking as well, and we look at those key important elements, just as um, was referenced earlier as well, tourism is a massive um, benefit to our community. So we have the Werribee Open Range Zoo here. We have the Rathweiss, the, um, the oldest and still continuing um, base and military base in the world here. And Werribee Mansion, just to mention a few. So, um, and if we touch on which um, with the, the vet school and as panelists mentioned earlier, it's things like the investment in, in Werribee Zoo. In November 2020, there was an investment of $84 million um, into the Werribee Open Range Zoo, which was really will be really transformative and it will enable the zoo to have that new elephant sanctuary. Um, and I can't actually picture a better place to welcome um, new baby elephants than in, um, in our municipality. Um, and as we know, we, um, we like lots of uh, young people and uh, that will add to the sort of young pep uh, population growth. So lots of uh, investment in that key area for us. Um, and also one of the key things was Dr. Mark um, Pilgrim, um, who was appointed on October, 2021, who um, came from Chester Zoo in the north of uh, England as well. Um, and that's really to help sort of drive that change both in relation to the zoo and in relation to the elephants, but also in relation to some of those infrastructure elements that could be added. So in 2019, so pre-COVID, um, we had 1.5 million visitors 
that would be to our um, what we would class as our tourism precinct, which also includes key areas, things like our equestrian facilities as well, which um, I'm sure that would be um, an impact for the veterinary school as well. So the equestrian centre, the Werribee Mansion, or that area had those 1.5 million visitors. In 2021, that figure um, dropped to 751,000, but we are anticipating and we're planning to um, help what we can do to help drive that tourism economy. And also really have that economy where people actually don't just come into our municipality and leave. Um, it's very accessible, as you would know, from the zoo, um, from the freeway. But what we really want people to do is we want them to stay in the area. We want people to be able to uh, stick around and actually spend money in our area, both in relation to our hospitality sector, things like um, our accommodation and all businesses from there. Um, and it was a real great reminder for me when I was looking at doing this um, presentation that um, Melbourne University Vet School itself is the first vet school in here in Australia, um, founded in 1880 by a vet from London. So all our um, support of our local economy, our local businesses is key, both in relation to us locally as a municipality, but also more generally across, um, across the whole of Victoria as well. So if we look inside, what do we do? Um, I'm not sure what people um, know about um, local government. So it's always um, quite good to um, sort of take a step back and say, what, what does local government actually do? And the phrase at the top there, roads, rates and rubbish, um, used to be a paraphrase in relation to local government and saying that's really all local government do. But actually local government is far more um, broader than that. And um, I'm sure you'll be pleased to know I'm not going to be um, reading all them, um, all the things we listed there. But we do a lot of work in relation to education, in relation to maternal health, um, not schools per se, which comes obviously under the state government, but those maternal health services, footpaths, things like roads. We are responsible for what's classed as a local road. So if you're ever not sure, there is a website which would be a declaration of um, local roads. And it actually tells you who is responsible for those roads. So things like those main roads, like Point Cook Road, Princess, Princess Highway, Balan Road, to mention some of the uh, larger roads locally, they're all managed by the state government. It tends to be those sort of smaller um, roads that the um, local government are responsible for within the states and within the sort of smaller areas. And we're also responsible for things like animal management, which will be key for you, libraries. Um, and we also support grants and do a lot of work within the education sector in relation to um, people making sure people use their waste bins properly um, and all that sort of stuff that we can do things like um, greening, um, greening the waste in relation to our canopy, tree canopy, which is something we're looking to um, improve dramatically as well. So there's three levels of government. There's local government, which is what um, I am the mayor of here, um, the state government and the federal government. And we would say that we were the closest level to the community because we are the most accessible to the community and the community um, often reaches out to us and will see us around at many events and um, we get invited to things. So as you can see on there, um, we have 189 facilities that um, Wyndham is responsible for, which includes things like leisure facilities and libraries and 1,540 hectares of open space. So um, a, a large municipality um, and also with lots of, lots of lots of opportunities and also challenges. So if we look at what our current and future challenges are, um, as I've said, being that sort of most locally accessible to people, we sort of understand those sorts of grassroots issues that we have. And for us, community engagement is very much um, something that we do all the time. You know, I constantly would get emails or calls from residents. We constantly go out and, and ask for feedback. Um, what we might not know, what people might not know, is we have our main um, platform, our main community engagement platform is called The Loop. Um, we hold all our information on there in relation to um, what we're doing, um, master plans, 
or key things that we're asking for people to feedback. Um, and that is accessible and something that people could actually say they would like to join even in the sort of a newsletter format or they would just like to be connected with a certain area um, within it rather than um, you know, being constantly updated on things that are matters that they're not interested in. But what we also have is, you know, we realize um, social media, we have lots of um, data platforms. So um, we have obviously like Instagram or um, Facebook, there's lots of different, I mean, I have my own uh, Facebook pages from there and that's a way that we communicate. But it's really important as well to have those sort of touch points with people. We spoke about our diversity, English, um, as we've said, for many people um, is not their first language, it's not the main language that may be spoken at home. So we also have um, the Wyndham News, which is a physical publication, and that is delivered to every home in Wyndham every month, with the exception of January and February's edition is together. So there's 11 a year. That's delivered to every house in Wyndham, and basically that is delivered by Australia Post. And the idea of that is that people can be connected with some of our key initiatives. It has some of our key, it also has about all the different councillors, how you can contact them in relation to their emails and phone numbers. Um, and it is a sort of that sort of touch point to try and say, you know, we're here, we're listening, we want to know what's important. And at the end of the day, it is very much. Um, our agenda is driven by the community. So at the beginning of a council term, we have what's called a council plan, which lasts those four years. And that is driven by the community and listening to the community's needs. And every year we have, um, we um, at the end of the year and actually every quarter, we actually update and tell you how we're doing, what's our initiatives, where we're up to and what we're doing going forward so that we're constantly listening and the, um, the, with the aim that we are really reflecting what our community wants, needs, and therefore or have in that engagement as well. So public transport. So uh, on campus, as opposed to probably um, if you were um, doing a lot of the work online on Zoom, public transport, you would know, is one of the biggest things that is um, a bugbear for our community and is also one of our greatest challenges. Um, we are a car dependent um, community. Um, this comes out on the ABS data. Um, many families, as we've got there, have more than one car. Um, this obviously has an impact both in relation to the time that people have to spend in a car and the cost of living. So that that dependency and that um, inability to um, connect across the municipality um, is so for us, it is really important because we know, and it's that constant ask that the community wants the infrastructure in place um, before the development. Much of that is actually outside of our control. So public transport is under the state government. So in relation to buses, trains, those big arterial roads are all done and funded by the state government. So what we do is as a local authority is that we advocating to um, the state government and really advocating that key need and the importance as to why it is um, important for us. So if we look at their, our new suburbs, and as you know, there are many, have too few bus services and our train station car parks are often full. Our train lines, either our regional rail link or our metropolitan train lines, the Werribee lines can be overcrowded. Um, and because the roads are congested, that has that impact on people's everyday life. Um, and what Wyndham is doing as well, what we can do under our control, is um, spend money and time within our active transport network. So we're looking at what we can do in relation to whether it's footpaths, in relation to those missing transport links, in relation to things like um, bicycle networks, all those things that we can try and make it more um, Wyndham more connected more livable and easier to be connected in relation to both um, pedestrians and in relation to cyclists as well. So looking at all those aspects so that people are less reliant on cars and can use public transport or can actually um, get themselves to um, wherever they're going themselves. So our key priority, which um, 
in relation to um, the other ones, and they're really in, in, into act and into we really, is that for us, job creation and having local jobs is of key importance, which is why things like our local businesses, which is why things like um, the veteran university, all of those are really key because we need those local jobs. And East Werribee, is really um it's really a potentially an absolute game changer for our community um the east where the um area has the facility and um, from all the reports to create that 60,000 um jobs for our area and it would um, support the state's economy and also um unlock that so we have a national employment innovation cluster um, and what that would do is it would also um, ease the congestion challenges for Melbourne itself. So I remember when I um, came here uh, a few years ago, I had at that point, it was called the Metropolitan Planning Authority rather than the Victorian Planning Authority as it is now. Um, and they were talking about how half our trains at peak were not full and half our roads were not busy. And I sat there and I thought to myself, well, how is that the case? And what they said was, well, in relation to the morning, if you are coming from Melbourne, coming this way, if the roads are not too bad and the same in the evening, the same on the trains. So the point is that we believe by activating East Werribee, what you're doing is you're making people go to destinations in different places, in different locations, and therefore utilising all the facilities and options we have to their capacity at all times, rather than having those heavy peaks and troughs. So for us, boosting those employment options and those employment opportunities to where you live is really key. We also think there is the real possibility to generate those new industries and learning opportunities. We know our population is highly motivated. We know it is highly educated. In the last data that was available from the ABS, um, Point Cook and that area um, within Wyndham had the um, joint highest number of post-qualification experiences and residents. And we know that we do have that highly educated population, which often has to travel out of Wyndham to actually go into uh, the CBD or other areas to actually be able to work. And we feel that we really have that opportunity to have those sectors here um, and to deliver more health and community services for, for that Western region often planning in the past has um, not given us the space or the capacity to deliver some of those key services that we need locally. Um, and it was good that in the last state budget for 2022, 2023, there was 2.8 million um, that was per side funding for development of that roadmap and fast tracking what is called, so a precinct structure review from those that may know is sort of a planning document that really sort of says what will happen in an area in relation to the roads, in relation to the land use. And it's more of a sort of um, an overarching map of what you would like to see in the space. So because the area is so large, without that funding and that development work going forward, it feels like it's such a, a big amount of space and a big amount of land, you know, 75,000 hectares of land sitting there, um, that it's quite hard to tackle. So it was really good that the um, state government did put that forward as a way forward, but we really did want the um, state government and the federal government to commit to activating the East Werribee because we really do feel it will be an absolute game changer for our community. Community. Schools. So when you looked at things like our population growth, um, and I spoke about the equivalent to every um, four weeks we need a new school, for us that's a, a key challenge. So long-term schools provision needed. Um, by 2031, um, even regarding so precinct structure funds, whatever's already put aside for schools, what will be needed is another six on top of that. So we need that sort of plan growth. We need that plan growth in relation to schools so that um, people can live, work and play locally. And the same in relation to the university and that they have the facilities on their doorstep so that they will be able to, um, they will be able to stay and, and, and live in Wyndham. If you look at, so um, we have here, that in Wyndham, we have on average 983 students per government school, uh, almost twice the greater Melbourne average. Some of our schools in Wyndham here have over 3,000 pupils in them. So 
for us, it's really important that people have that great start in life, that great educational element, and that then also enables people to move forward in relation to um, being able to um, have their dreams and what they want to do, whether it's um, university or other skill sets in life, but that it's really key, um, real key importance for us and our community more broadly. So um, to sort of wrap up some of our challenges, it's um, for us as a council, when we look at our challenges it going forward, it's really we have um, rate capping. So we have uh, a rate cap at the moment, which is 1.75% um, going forward. Um, we have the possibility that we could um, raise as a council if we wanted to. The rate cap is 3.5%, which would be for the next uh, financial rateable year. Um, as a council, we have so much that we want to deliver, both in relation to services with that ever expanding population. Um, and we also therefore have, um, when you look at things like um, inflation, you look at things like how much our um, facilities cost to deliver. So if you look at a lot of our master plans and reserves that we're actually building, um, these are coming in as a tender for anywhere between 25% and 33% higher than anticipated, but our amount of money that we can raise. So often they are funded by um, the developer that built the work in the area. So they have what's called, they would put some money in for that infrastructure, but it very rarely covers anything like the cost of actually developing that site. And that was prior to these more um, recent cost escalations. So for us, it's very important when you looked at all those different services in relation to the roads and all the services for the individual, we really look at saying, what can we do better, differently? What can we do in relation to our community and making sure that we are using the money to the best of its ability and um, that we are doing the best for our community and our residents because at the end of the day, that's why we're here. In relation to family domestic violence, our figures for our area are very high. So for us, it's what we can do in relation to getting that support for um, family domestic violence, having those more health facilities and services for our area, it's particularly when you look at the growth. You know, from where we are at the moment, uh, 315,000, we're looking at being in, you know, 18 years or 17 years now, being over 500,000, absolutely massive growth. And we need those key um, facilities for health um, to be there. Um, better investment in vital services such as maternal health. Um, we know that start to a child's life is key of key importance, not only for the child, but for the family as well. So that is also maternal health. Um, that is also a key area for our community, which is exacerbated because of the, obviously the age of our children and our population more generally. Um, we also latterly have that um, better investment that we need, our challenge um, to deliver that infrastructure in line with population growth. So we want to have those, at the moment, we just have those two um, large leisure facilities. We have Aquapulse, we have Eagle Stadium, but we know given the size of our population, we need to have more aqua facilities, we, um, we have the open uh, um, pool, um, but we need more internal um, indoor um, aqua facilities and also more uh, leisure facilities to keep our population healthy. Um, it it, it um, ticks so many boxes in relation to leisure, both in relation to team building, mental health, physical health, all those sorts of areas. Um, and it, it's, um, it is a challenge because of the cost of some of these um, facilities are, you know, over 100 million and we don't as a council have the capacity to build these facilities ourselves. We really need that link in with the state government um, and even the federal government to support us in relation to what we can actually do and um, help deliver for, um, for our community. So um, that's some of the, the, the key challenges. Um, Wyndham is, um, I believe it's the only um, 
place that I've lived here in Australia. I've loved him living here. It's such a vibrant and exciting place to live um, and work. Um, and our, as, a, as a council, what we are doing is we want it to be the most livable place that um, people enjoy being, enjoy living, um, and really sort of um, work on anything we can do in relation to that. Um, yeah, going forward, both in our planning and working with those different levels of um, government, both um, uh, state and federal, to help us be able to live that for our community. And that's the that that's really the end of my um, presentation in relation to uh, slides. And um, I'm more than happy to um, yeah answer any questions that any men may have. Um, and yeah, anything that I, I could do to help and assist on that, I'd uh, love to do so. Thank you very much. That was marvellous. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mayor. It was wonderful to uh, hear all about uh, City of Wyndham. Uh, I will ask um, Panos if he would uh, like to uh, chime in. There we go. <laughs> um, I, I, I comment from myself. So I'll just, I'll just turn it off. <laughs> he's in the dark. Yes, <laughs> this is the, he's on Air Force One, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, the acting president. I can, I can jump in with a question if I may, Aaron, please. Thank you, Josh. Uh, thank you. Susan, I, I think the statistics about the uh, likely growth of Wyndham are really exciting. And, and I know there's ambitions for uh, Wyndham to become uh, Victoria's second city, uh, which I think is a, a great, great vision. One statistic that um, really um, st stuck in my mind was the statistic about approximately 50% of households um, don't have English as their first language at home. And I wondered how you felt um, local businesses, perhaps especially vet businesses, which would, would, would include what we do at the Rover Campus, mm -hmm. how well we accommodate those language needs for, for people that are, you know, with, with say, vets, they're dealing with quite emotional situations mm -hmm. with sick animals and perhaps language can be a barrier. And I wondered how well you mm -hmm. felt generally businesses do with accommodating that and whether perhaps those of us in more technical businesses perhaps mm -hmm. should be doing more to, to, to accommodate people whose language is, first language is not English? Mm -hmm. So it, it's, a, it's a great question, uh, Josh, and thank you for that. I, I think it, it's hard to say in relation to how people are doing. I can, uh, from, our, from our perspective, from a council, we know we need a lot more work on it. We know we're doing a lot on it. So we're making a lot of our documents and our bots and stuff that, that we'll be able to translate. We have the uh, options of translators, that facilitation element um so i think it's it's more i suppose individual businesses it's it's more of a thing to say to review and to say how do well well do you think you're doing and that assessment so what we have is we're having an annual assessment at the moment in the council which is run um by an independent sector that says sort of how well are we doing as a council and a whole variety of sectors and i suppose it's that constant sort of review and look and to say what do you where do you think you are where could you be um the figures are amazing in relation to as well probably where businesses are based so in point cork um the the figure is over 70 percent of people have a parent bone overseas and the language is the highest number of languages spoken in any home across the uh, across the whole of australia so even within the municipality there is that wide divergence you know so we have areas that probably are more traditional where that probably wouldn't be the case and areas the task. So I think it, it, it's a great question. And I think it's, to me, that growth is, is really the, the sort of figure because people sort of, you know, when you look at numbers on their own and you sort of think, oh, but then when you actually say, what could that impact be? And also that, I mean, that great, as you said, that great opportunity, you know, it, it's, you go into a lot of areas and when I lived in the UK as well, that population was static. So as a business, what could you do? You know, you were always having to reach out and do something different to get people. Mm. Now, if you're doing something that's great and working, you might not necessarily have to do something different to reach that greater population because that greater population may be coming 
to you, Blay, it's yeah. um, it's natural growth. So I'm not sure yeah. if that answers it. <laughs> I know it does. But thank you. And I'm just thinking that we really should be looking at what what we do in terms of written information that we give to um, clients for, for, for example, uh, because although, you know, hard to imagine having an interpreter service for every possible yeah. language, you could certainly imagine having information sheets in, in many of the common other languages that people speak in the region. So what we do is we have, um, and I didn't touch on it, I mean, there's so many things you could touch on. So we have a community connector service and that service is looking at sign, making sure people are reaching out to all the appropriate services. Um, maybe not even primarily council or other services that so many people offer, because when people are new, that's often what they don't know, what services are potentially out there, which changes around the world. And what we have is those key languages. We have them in our community centres and apply exactly that. Mm. So the key languages on all those sorts of topics of, of those headings to say this is a service, therefore you can do it. Just as you described, those key touch points as something that helps people at, at, at that point. But you're right, it's um, hard to be able to um, what you can do on that broader scale. Yeah. I've just popped Brilliant. a link Thank into you. the into the chat for the Wyndham Community connector service which I think is quite important given, given that the veterinary school too is a diaspora of you know United Nations of staff mm. and students um, I think that's very important um, Panos you had your hand up I think that Simon raised his hand oh. Oh, thank you um, thanks councillor um, you rightly said that creation of jobs in the local area is going to be really vital as uh, Wyndham continues to grow uh, and I know there's there's been some quite sort of grand plans for employment precincts yeah. particularly right close to the vet school that's that, that big yeah. sort of open area of land yeah. just south of the vet school um, I realize that that will probably come under the state government purview but um, I was just wondering if you had any sort of updates on on what's happening in areas like that Yes, yeah, so that was East Werribee. So if I didn't make it very clear, so that was the East Werribee slide where we spoke about that in the last state um, government election, they put 2.8 million into that precinct structure planning for that area. So we're working with those key stakeholders to get the, those areas working forward, because otherwise at the moment, yes, it's, uh, it's 75,000 hectares. I mean, it's absolutely enormous. And um, just down from the vet school as well, um, just before you hit um, Sneeds Road, um, behind the police station, they mm -hmm. are currently building the next, um, the law courts are going in there. So um, that is, um, I believe that will be the most courts outside the centre of Melbourne. So there's a whole VCATs going in there, the children's courts, um, the magistrates courts. There's, a, I think it's something like 120 million is being delivered there. So, but yeah, in relation to that planning, exactly. Um, to me, as um, and I'm probably residents as well, it's like you don't want people just keep talking about it. We know it's a great idea, just just get on and do it. Which is why this money in the budget was important because that is what it's about: planning what we're doing in relation to those areas and getting it started, getting it moving, and the councils working with the state government and those other key stakeholders to actually get that get that happening. Mm. Terrific, thanks. And I've popped a link into uh, the chat as well for uh, if you want to connect with the Wyndham uh, Council, including signing up to their newsletters. Uh, earlier, I went straight in and signed up to newsletters <laughs> myself, which I should have done sooner. Um, Panos? Are you there, Panos? Can you hear us? No, maybe he can't. Uh, there's a comment in the chat mm -hmm. from um, Professor, Professor Marshall Light Alice. Where is East where where in East Werribee are you looking forward to developing? And are the market gardens safe? Yes, so two different topics. So if we do the East Werribee first, so East Werribee, where it is, as as, um, uh, as the final last question was, it is really behind the vet school and that sort of circle down. So circle down, a quadrangle down. So you have behind Princess Freeway down, it goes over over the freeway as well. So it links in with um, Point Cook and it goes to the bottom. So the 75,000 hectares is there. Um, where we're looking to develop is, um, so that's the work that's happening at the moment. So that's 2.8 million. Um, we, as a council, we really want to say what is going to work in relation to that state government and those key stakeholders. So as a council, we're really looking at working with the others rather than saying we want this site or this site. 
um, to be started first. We have those key areas. So we've got the health sector, you know, we've got the justice precinct structure, all of those sorts of stuff that we want to develop further. But really that planning document is part of that. And in relation to the market gardens, yes. So um, they've done a lot of work and you might be able, able to find the link or I can certainly send it through. Um, they've done a lot of protection. So yeah, the um, where it be south, you know, we would say is the food bowl, um, one of the key fold bowls of um, Victoria. So protection of um, Werribee South and protection of the farming land there. But not also, not only just the protection of the land, but what's important is things like resources that they need. So that good quality water, access to good quality water, all those other infrastructure things. So there's no point really on um, just making it um, that sort of... Um, Green, um, green wedge areas and the, um, the farming zone safe, you really need to give them the resources for those farmers to be able to farm successfully because otherwise without that, then it, it really becomes very difficult. So there is lots of um, work and there is lots of things that's happened on the, um, so you'll find it on the Werribee South and that sort of green wedge, that sort of um, support of that um, sort of area. But it's crucial both in relation to the community I think it's crucial to help and when you look and I think it's you know um one of the taglines for Wyndham is that city coast and country and we have all those elements you know you don't have to go very far in the direction to really have that coast that amazing you know amazing farmers that are doing some really innovative um uh, stuff down there as well really on our on, on our doorstep here in Wyndham. I've popped a link into the green living map uh, for yeah. Wyndham uh, City as well, which is uh, takes in the market gardens. Panos, are yeah. you back with us on Air Force One? Yes. Have you landed? Yes, yes, yes. Air Force One is live. Uh, so I, I just wanted to thank you again for this uh, very interesting talk. And my, my question was basically exactly the same as, as Simon's. And uh, so I'm, I'm covered. Uh, it was about the innovation hub and the plans yeah. uh, to develop uh, East Werribee and uh, connection with uh, or overlap with um, the state government uh, planning or mm -hmm. what what, what uh, the situation is there. So I think mm -hmm. it's pretty comprehensively covered. The, there was one of the thing that we've done in relation to local businesses is within that East Werribee precinct as well. We've done, we've created an area called Spark. You might see it if you drive down Sneeds Road, which is really that innovative hub to try and deal with those local um, businesses that are really innovative that might need that extra help and support so that the council is being really sort of hands on actually giving them a venue as well to sort of create that sort of innovative sort of plans and structures and give them that extra support. But I'm, you know, we, um, it was in the last state government election. So we really, and that work is ongoing. So we're really hoping to see where does that next go? Because as a council, it really is a game changer for us. And it's, that is our number one. Um, and if I didn't make it clear, I'll say again, it is our number one priority. We speak to all our state um, politicians and in relation to our federal, that really is, um, that really is what we're spending a lot of, time and energy on getting it moving forward and we don't just want the theory we want you know we want action we want stuff happening in that space i so popped that you. link in for the spark innovation hub there too which looks very interesting yeah. i think from uh, i've got a bit of a background working with student experience and yeah. mayor i think uh, your plans for the transport are very important our mm. students um sometimes struggle um yes. to get out there because you know they uh, in their third and uh, third and fourth years they are uh, very yeah. much based at Werribee and they do visit yeah. in first and second year and yeah. you know and also accommodation that's yes. you know uh, well that's a statewide challenge now yes. um, affordable accommodation and so I think any efforts that you know are underway will benefit our students to be able to make it out there because you know not all of them can afford cars and no, so no. And 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 it's and it's not great for the environment either. Even if people can afford mm. the cars, we don't we don't want them to be using them. But it's and um, we've got so there's things like there's trials which are in parts of um uh, so the trial at the moment was started and is continued in um so it's in uh, Tarnit and it's called like a flexi ride and the flexi ride 
is one where you book on the app. So you book, uh, you actually, there's no set destination. You book where you want to go and from and to on the app. And it's done by um, our local transport providers. Um, and they actually go around the area, dropping people off and picking them up and really sort of connecting them with the schools and the facilities and whatever that looks like. And they have had amazing success. So it's something that was a trial. Um, so I don't know if you can find a link for it, but it's called a, a Flexi Ride um, and it was in Tarnit North and it was being tried in three places um, across Melbourne. But uh, it, that is something we feel that both, it's win-win for everybody. It's win-win for the community, the operator makes money. So, you know, and it's those smaller buses that can go to all those destinations. And in relation to housing, I actually this week was at an, um, the council very recently um, did an affordable housing strategy. Um, and I was actually at a forum um, this week, I think it could even be yesterday. So either yesterday or the day before I was at an, um, an affordable housing strategy. And we were, um, uh, it was a presentation that was a whole part of um, having in our planning, um, because we know we don't have enough affordable housing. And the housing primarily in Wyndham is um, four bedrooms and above. So most of our housing stock is that. We have very little housing that's one and two bedrooms, very little housing that um, caters for that need across the board and that we really need that housing stock in there and that sort of affordable housing as well as social housing because without it, exactly as you described, um, people can't afford to live here. And we're also aware of the fact that we want to be able to support people the whole of the time. And we know a lot of our families live here, but that we also have a lot of single people and people's lives change what they need. So affordable housing is something's key. And um, as I say, that was the first strategy we've done. But again, a bit like East Werribee, to me, it's not about talking about it, it's about getting it done. So we had all the providers there, the service providers, the developers there. How, what can we do with our planning schemes? What can we do for our things? Because we're not a, provider of affordable housing but what can we do in relation to things like our planning provisions well how can we make it um, easier for developers to do to deliver what could we do for service providers and really be that sort of facilitator to to get those key key drivers moving I've popped a couple of links in there for both transport mm -hmm. and housing. Um, Javier has popped in. When will all uh, when all train state when will all the train stations be built? For example, Truganina and Tarnit West. That's probably that's more of a state base, but you'd probably have the inside track though, Mayor. Um, so yes, yeah, so um, the Truganina one is at least a decade away. It's the in the state election um, they gave the money for planning. But in relation to it built, it's um, about a decade away. Um, one of the next ones in Tani, I believe they're looking at um, a lot faster than that, maybe 2024, 25. So they've got the, so we, we've, um, they did the provision for four train stations. So um, there's train stations in Tani, um, things like, I think Davis Road is the um, next one to be built. We want one in Sayers Road, there's one in Truganina. So these are all, um, so it was within, um, it was within the two states. Um, so the politicians were Sarah Connolly, who's the MP who for Truganina, and Dylan White, who's the, um, has been elected the MP for Tarni. So they have the more precise thing on the timelines, but um, yeah, the Truganina one, they took a long time. I mean, there's a lot of money, and then timing. Um, but the Truganina one, as I say, I'm sure is about a decade away. The next one in Tarnit that's been built, I think is, it, it's quite short really. It's within the next three years, I think tops. Cause, um, but yeah, there's train stations are key. I mean, they carry, you know, Tarnit, one of the, you know, busiest train stations on the um, regional rail line and, and like Williams Landing, one of the busiest ones on the Metro line. You know, people in our municipality will take public transport if it's there. And that's what we say, you know, in the top 20 bus routes across the whole of Melbourne, 14 of them are in Wyndham. You know. I, I, I note that we're coming up to the hour now yeah. and, I, you know, from perspective of myself as a member of uh, Zoos Victoria, I wanted to say thank you for all of your efforts to support the zoo, uh, Werribee uh, Open Range Zoo, because um, that's growing and growing, which is wonderful. And we have very close links as a veterinary mm. school, of course, um, you know, uh, um, a lot of our vets are out there. I know that... Um, one of our vets, whom we all know and shall remain nameless, has been out there uh, following each of the births 
um, oh, collecting the placentas, um, oh. and which has been quite hilarious. Um, but and he sent us some wonderful photos. So thank you for that. And look, thank you for your ongoing support of the school. I uh, I'll, I'll speak on behalf of um, Josh, Professor Josh Slater, when I say that please do come visit. Josh will bake some yeah. scones, and we'll lay on high tea. And um, I, I think we, you know, we'd love to talk more about how uh, our our vet school at Werribee can link in. Uh, Josh, any fi wi final wise sage words? Oh yes, uh, I promise not to bake any scones. Oh, for the next okay. visit. right, okay, right. I <laughs> might I'll buy some. <laughs> I'll pop by the bakery. Um, I will buy um, some instead. Excellent, Panos. Uh, in final comments from Air Force One before you you take off again. Just want to thank you again, and I'm very happy that we expanded the, this forum into discussions uh, with, with the local government. I think it's, a, it's a important. Uh, thank you again for, for this. And uh, thank you once again, uh, Mayor Councillor Susan McIntyre. We we are having the opening on Monday, I believe, of our um, Green Cross Veterinary Hospital. You're probably a very busy woman, but. Um, I think you're doing I'm pretty sure I'm coming. Oh, how marvellous. Yes. Yes, no. Right. Now, yes. you'll be wearing as the Susan's Merrill necklace. VIP guests. Mer the Merrill necklace and the full robes, I do hope. Um, ladies oh, and gentlemen, oh. please. <laughs> Maybe please, you just might. Yeah, Maybe you just. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking our um, special guest presenter today, uh, Mayor Councillor Susan McIntyre, whom we look forward to seeing on Monday at the launch. And a thank you to Josh and Panos and Simon. And uh, we might uh, tie it up there today. Thank you again. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Love Thanks, you. Susan. Bye, Ron. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Bye-bye.